Welcome back to the channel. F Dash isn't here right now, so the interns have taken over once again. This is episode two of the Intern Asylum podcast with your hosts, Paul Jacobson and Tamara Wilson. Today they'll discuss the graphical, gameplay, and content differences between the PS2 and PS3 slash Xbox 360 versions of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 and how these differences impact the overall player experience. Let's listen in. All right, so you're looking at Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, right? right? And you've got all these articles and forum threads trying to figure out if that PS2 version stacks up against the PS3 and Xbox 360 releases. Yeah, it's a really interesting comparison, actually, because yeah. we're not just talking about, like, a fresh coat of paint, you know, a simple graphical upgrade. The PS2 version of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, it's almost like its own thing. Okay, different okay. levels, different bosses, even the story, while it's still about Civil War, has a, a bit of a different flavor to it. Huh. Okay, so let's, uh, I guess let's start with the obvious. We're talking graphics, right? Sure. We're talking about a three-year gap between the PS2 and then the PS3 and 360 coming out. Exactly. And okay. I mean, as you might expect, you know, the PS3, Xbox 360 versions, they're going to offer that high definition goodness. That was kind of the big thing in 2009. But what's interesting is some people say that the PS3 version, even though it has the option to run at 1080p, it doesn't look quite as crisp as the Xbox 360 running at 720. Hmm. So even within like the HD releases, there's some noticeable difference. Yeah, there are some differences there. And the PS3 version also seems to have a little bit of trouble with frame rate issues. The 360, mm -hmm. from what I understand, runs a little bit smoother. So it's like when things get really intense on the PS3, it's going to... It might chug a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of frustrating when you're in the middle of the boss fight and it decides to take a little break. Yeah, that'll that'll kill the mood for sure. Exactly. All right, so for those who are looking for like this smoother experience, go 360 if you're going HD. Mm -hmm. Now, the PS2 version, I mean, that's a different beast. Yeah. That's We're talking that classic, I don't know, I've seen some forums say muddy. Yeah blocky you know visually it definitely shows its age yeah but you also have to remember i mean that thing launched at 39.99 oh wow 20 dollars cheaper than the ps3 and 360 versions that's that's a big chunk of change back then that was a big deal that was that was like two extra pizzas you could buy while you're playing your your slightly less pretty but potentially more interesting PS2 version. Well, that's the thing, because it's not even just a graphical downgrade. It really is, like I was saying earlier, it's kind of its own thing. So you're saying like different levels. Different levels, yeah. Different bosses, the way the story unfolds even, while still being centered around Civil War, has a different feel to it. And it borrows a lot, I think, mechanically from the first Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Okay. So if you were a fan of that game, the PS2 version might feel a little bit more familiar. So it's like a love letter to the original, but with a new coat of like Civil War paint on it. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's like it's like finding out your favorite band has like a whole album of B-sides, you know, or like unreleased demos that have a very different vibe. Yeah, them. and some people, that's what they love. Yeah, yeah. They don't want the polished studio album. They want that well, raw, well, that, this... that different take. Yeah, and for those people, PS2 versions calling your name. And they'll probably tell you all about it if you give them the chance. But speaking of different takes, did we even mention the PSP version yet? Oh, right. The PSP version. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be as visually impressive as the others, but it always felt like those PSP versions, they tried to, like, pack things in to make up for it, you know? Yeah, and this one they actually did. You get four extra characters on the PSP version. No kidding. Yeah, so Hawkeye, Black Widow, Ronan, and Captain Marvel. Whoa, four extra heroes. That's a pretty sweet deal right there. Plus, it's portable. Exactly. And if that wasn't enough, it's also got three unlockable game modes. You've got Uber Hero mode, Hardcore mode, and Hardcore Squad. So you're saying even on the smaller screen, this version's got a ton going on. Right. They really packed it in. So we're talking three completely different experiences here, depending on which console you choose. Pretty much. But for those of us who can only play one, what about the actual gameplay? How different is the PS2 version compared to what you were saying about the PS3 and Xbox 360? So at their core, they're all action RPGs. You know, you assemble your team, you do combos, you level up your characters. Right. But I think the PS2 version definitely has a more classic, like, arcade -y feel. More akin to that first Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Ah, uh, okay, so it's more about the button mashing front. 
You could say that. Yeah, it's a little more straightforward. The PS3 and 360 versions, those introduce the fusion powers. Right, right. Which, you know, those combine two heroes' powers together. So it becomes a lot more strategic. Yeah. There's definitely a higher skill ceiling in those versions because of it. You have to think about your team composition, who works well together. On the PS2, it's a little more pick your favorites and go to town. I can see how both would be fun, though. Depends what you're in the mood for. Exactly. And the PS3 and 360 versions, they also lean more heavily into the whole player choice aspect, especially with the Civil War storyline. Oh, you mean like choosing between Iron Man and Captain America actually matters? It does. It affects which cutscenes you see, what dialogue options you get, even how the final mission plays out. So that adds a lot of replayability because you can go back and see how things play out on the other side. The PS2 version, it kind of streamlines that. So it's a more focused narrative, yeah. but you don't get those branching paths. Okay, so it's like on the newer consoles, you get to choose your own adventure. But on PS2, it's like reading a really good comic book. That's a great way to put it. So both cool, but in different ways. But, mm -hmm. you know, we got to talk about the technical stuff too. Glitches, frame rate issues, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. How does the PS2 hold up? So from what I've seen in forums and stuff, yeah, the PS2 version, it can be a little more prone to slow down during those big fights, especially if there's a lot happening on screen. Oh, yeah, I bet. And the camera angles, those get mentioned a lot too. Ah, yeah, the old camera issues. I remember those days. It's something we don't really think about much anymore, but back then, getting the camera to cooperate in a 3D game, that could be a real challenge. Oh yeah, those were dark times. And the PS2, with less power to work with, it might struggle a bit more than the newer consoles. Right. Makes sense. Hmm. So, I mean, that's kind of part of its charm, I guess, right? The old PS2 trying to keep up with these huge superhero battles. It, it definitely adds to the experience, for better or for worse. For sure. For sure. So what you're saying is there's no right answer here, is there? It's PS2 versus PS3, 360, like try and pick your favorite Avenger. Yeah, it really depends what kind of experience you're looking for. Like, are those HD graphics the most important thing? Right. Or is it more about the unique content and that old school feel of the PS2 version? Or maybe you just want to play on the go, in which case, PSP all the way. It's cool though, going back and looking at these older games, you know, it's not just about how good they look, it's like, the whole package. Absolutely, the nostalgia factor is huge with these games. Yeah. People have a lot of fond memories of playing them back in the day. Exactly, like maybe you had the PS2 version back when you were a kid and digging it out now brings back all these feelings. Exactly, or maybe you missed out on one version or another and now's your chance to go back and experience it for the first time. Yeah, like maybe it's time to dust off that old PS3, finally see what that Civil War storyline is all about. See if choosing a side lives up to the hype. Exactly. Or, you know, fire up that PSP, see if you can still pull off those combos on those tiny little buttons. That's a challenge right there. A true test of skill. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, what we've learned here is there's no one best version of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. Nope. They've all got their own thing going on. And that's what makes it so interesting. It's not just a simple case of one being objectively better than the other. It's about finding the one that clicks with you. Well said. Yeah. Well said. All right, so there you have it. We've looked at the graphics, we've talked gameplay, we even went down that rabbit hole of camera angles. It's been quite a deep dive. Yeah, it's been fun. It has. And to everyone listening, thank you, as always, for joining us. Now, if you'll, excuse me, I've got a hankering for some pizza, and I think I know just what console I'm going to dust off to play while I eat it. Until next time.